Aladdin Story Part 2 There once lived, in one of the large and rich cities of China, a tailor named Mustafa. He was very poor. He could hardly, by his daily labor, maintain himself and his family, which consisted only of his wife and a son. His son, who was called Aladdin, was a very careless and idle fellow. He was disobedient to his father and story of Aladdin mother, and would go out early in the morning and stay out all day, playing in the streets and public places with idle children of his own age. When he was old enough to learn a trade, his father took him into his own shop and taught him how to use his needle. But all his father's endeavors to keep him to his work were vain, for no sooner was his back turned than he was gone for that day. Mustafa chastised him, but Aladdin was incorrigible, and his father, to his great grief, was forced to abandon him to his idleness, and was so much troubled about him that he fell sick and died in a few months. Aladdin who was now no longer restrained by the fear of a father, gave himself entirely over to his idle habits and was never out of the streets from his companions. This course he followed till he was fifteen years old, without giving his mind to any useful pursuit or the least reflection on what would become of him. As he was one day playing, according to custom. In the street with his evil associates, a stranger passing by stood to observe him. This stranger was a sorcerer, known as the African magician, as he had been but two days arrived from Africa, his native country. The African magician Observing in Aladdin's countenance something which assured him that he was a fit boy for his purpose, inquired his name and history of some of his companions, and when he had learned all he desired to know, went up to him, and taking him aside from his comrades, said, Child, was not your father called Mustafa the tailor? Yes, sir, answered the boy but he has been dead a long time. At these words the African magician threw his arms about Aladdin's neck and kissed him several times with tears in his eyes and said, I am your uncle. Your worthy father was my own brother. I knew you at first sight, you are so like him. Then he gave Aladdin a handful of small money saying, Go, my son, to your mother, give my love to her, and tell her that I will visit her tomorrow, that I may see where my good brother lived so long, and ended his days. Aladdin ran to his mother, overjoyed at the money his uncle had given him. Mother, said he, have I an uncle? No, child, replied his mother, you have no uncle by your father's side or mine. I am just now come, said Aladdin, from a man who says he is my uncle and my father's brother. He cried and kissed me when I told him my father was dead, and gave me money, sending his love to you, and promising to come and pay you a visit that he may see the house my father lived and died in. Indeed, child, replied the mother, your father had no brother, nor have you an uncle. The next day the magician found Aladdin playing in another part of the town and embracing him as before. Put two pieces of gold into his hand and said to him, Carry this, child, to your mother. Tell her that I will come and see her tonight, and bid her get us something for supper, but first show me the house where you live. 